Hi, everybody. My name is Jamel Hawkins. I am the University of Georgia Family and Consumer Sciences agent for DeKalb County. And I just wanted to welcome you all. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, and so we are going to get started with this week's lesson, which is going to be talking about SMART goals. So it's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T, but you know, SMART goals. Um, and so we are going to talk about that. And this is in collaboration with our library systems um, for DeKalb County Libraries. And we wanted to come together and talk more about um, committing to be fit 2021. That is the theme for this class, um, for the challenges. And so um, this is SMART Goals. And once again, my name is Jamil Hawkins. So the objectives of this class um, or this workshop today is going to be uh, formulating SMART goals, which is specific, measurable, achievable, results focused, and time focused, short and long-term personal and professional goals. Because your goals don't just have to be um, your personal, it, they can also be professional, they could be family-based, they could be anything that you want it to be. Um, and then also um, identifying barriers to achieving goals and describe strategies for overcoming obstacles to success. Because there's always gonna be that barrier that kind of keeps you from achieving the things that you want to do. So I want for you to stop for a second and read this. I'll read it aloud. Um, and it says, where will you be in five years? Close your eyes and picture where you think you will be. Now, open your eyes take out a blank sheet of paper and complete the following sentence. Five years from now, I will be. So you can pause the video, you can, you know, think about it in your head and keep that thought in your mind. Um, if you already have a piece of paper, you just go ahead and write that down, uh, but we'll keep going. So now, now that we know where we want to be in five years, how are we going to get there? Huh, that's the question. <laughs> so how are we going to be able to move from this is what I want to do to this is what I'm doing and this is five years from now that or that time period gap from where I dreamed of where I wanted to be to where I actually am. So this is SMART goals. So the S in SMART is be thoughtful and specific about what you want to focus on. The M is pick a goal that is measurable so that you can continually monitor your progress. Um, the A is set yourself up for success by choosing something that is achievable. R is be results focused and have a concrete purpose. And then while that T is a little faded, um, <laughs> it's a T and it says be aggressive and realistic when setting your end time or date. Knowing that there is an end in sight will help you focus and push yourself. So specific, specific goals have a much greater chance of being accomplished than general goals. So there's always the general goals that people have at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, I want to lose weight, I want to um, move into another apartment, I want to buy a house. Those are all general goals because it doesn't have like a specific um, kind of detail in there. So to set a specific goal, you must answer the six W questions. Um, and that is who is involved? What do I want to accomplish? Where will, um, where will I accomplish this goal? When will I accomplish this goal? which result, I mean, excuse me, which requirements have to be met and why do I want to accomplish this goal? Um, so just think about those questions because that's something that you are gonna want to add into your goal to make it more specific um, so that you can be able to measure it so that you can achieve those goals. And so we're gonna get going. And so it's all gonna tie in at the end. So stick with me. <laughs> So next is measurable, establishing concrete criteria for measuring progress towards the attainment of your goal set. So then you want to ask yourself, how much, how many, how will I know when it is accomplished? So that is adding to that, um, you know, if you want to decide that you want to buy property um, or if you want to buy some land, if that's something that you want to do. So instead of just saying, I want to buy land, and you need to say how many, how many acres of land, um, you know, how much does that, do I want to spend on that? And, you know, if you do purchase that land, 
is that when you know that you're accomplished or is that something like a base layer of I, now I want to put a house on top of that land, you know? So next is achievable. So your goal should be achievable, but they should also challenge you. So you want to ask yourself, is this goal reasonable and will it challenge me? So say, you know, you have a goal that says, I want to lose weight. And so you're like, okay, so then we're going to make it measurable. I want to lose 25 pounds in two weeks. Do you think that goal is a little, is reasonable? Um, it is a challenge, definitely, but is it reasonable? Is it healthy? Is it something that is going to make you feel better at the end of it? I just feel like you'd just be super tired at the end of that. <laughs> um, and it might not be the healthiest for you. Um, so that's just one example of a goal that might not be as reasonable, but if you kind of tailor it down to, I want to lose five pounds by the end of February. Now you have two months and that's a little bit more reasonable and will it challenge you? Um, it, that depends on where you're starting or who you have. Um, helping you along that journey. So that's just something that you also want to keep in your mind is, is that goal achievable? Is it reasonable? Is it something that I need, you know, that um, will challenge you? Next is results focus. So to be realistic, a goal must represent an objective you're willing and able to work towards accomplishment. Um, accomplishing, excuse me, goals should be measure outcomes, not activities. So you want to ask yourself, what is the reason, the purpose, or the benefit of accomplishing this goal? What will be the result of meeting your goal? So sometimes a lot of people want to say, I would like to fit back into a wedding dress, you know, by my next anniversary. That is a result because it'll make you feel better you know, it's just something that you've always wanted to do. Maybe you wanted to retake those pictures that didn't turn out too well um, a couple years ago when you first took them or a few years ago, you know, many years ago when you first took them and you want to retake them. That could be something. Um, something else could be you wanted to save X amount of money um, because you would like to put a down payment on a home or you would like to purchase a car or you would like to move into another apartment. That is something that is your reason behind. Um, your reason could also be for your family. So like, I want to help, you know, move my children into another district for schooling, um, but that requires money for you to move. And so that's a reason as well. So that's um, your result focus um, goals that you would need to have to keep in your head when you're making these goals. The next is time, or the last one is time. <clears throat> so goals should be linked to a time frame that creates a, a practical sense of urgency. Short-term goals usually have a deadline of a month or two at the most, and long-term goals usually have a deadline of one to five years. So that could be your professional goals. Um, you want to go back to school. That won't take one month that might take two to five years um you know one short-term month um goals might include i want to clean out my garage and i need it to be done or i want it to be done that that is also a goal doing the things that you have prolonged in your life um that you just want to get done and you know that you just need to have your reasoning or taking it step by step so that you can get to that so in order for your time, you want to ask yourself, what is the end date of this goal? And does it create a sense of urgency? So you know that you have been wanting to clean out your garage for forever. <laughs> and so um, a short-term goal could be by the end of January, which would give you about, what, three weeks from today or a couple weeks from whenever you start. Um, that is when you, that's your end date for that goal. And that is a short-term goal because it's usually, it's between a month or two months at most. Um, so one of those long-term goals, like I was saying, could be, I want to go back to school um, for my career. I want to change career paths. I would like to, you know, do something like that long-term or I would like to buy a house. I would like to buy a car. Those are those, or fi finish paying off a car could be a long-term goal as well. 
So when you take all those to account, there's also some action steps that you need to think about as well. Um, so one of the action steps is your motivation. In what ways are you motivated to accomplish this goal? What will happen if you don't attain this goal? Will accomplishing this goal make a difference in your life or your job? Um, so this is something that you want to think about of your why you want to do this. Um, it, when you have a motivation behind your goal, you're more prone to completing that goal. <laughs> um, and so, and th that's also another thing you want to ask yourself, what happens if you don't attain this goal? We should just push that time period further along so that you give yourself more time to finish this goal or is it something that you just don't think it's attainable at this moment and so you can put it on the back burner until you know another uh, chance comes up. So the second one is your SMART goals and so we're going to create those um, right after this. Um, and then the third is creating manageable steps. So is your goal too big or overwhelming? What will your first steps be? And do you have your steps written down? So when you make your goal, you want to think, wow, this is, I want to lose 50 pounds, you know? Um, and so is your goal too big or overwhelming? Um, and so it's easier to break down a goal into smaller steps so that you can complete that. So that could be your overall goal is in 2021, I would like, to um, lose X amount of weight. And so, but your first steps would probably be getting walking shoes so that the old shoes that you have are hurting your feet. They just don't, that's one of the reasons why you stop trying to work towards that goal. Um, so, you know, one of the first steps could be making sure that you have the appropriate equipment so that you can do that. And um, by equipment, I don't mean that you have to go to the gym. I mean that you could be walking around your neighborhood, but you still need good shoes on your feet so that you are comfortable and not hurting, harm, harming yourself um, while you're trying to work towards that goal. So that could be one of the first steps. And another step could be finding the time of day that fits you best. So it's sunny outside right now. Maybe I want to start going out during my lunch if I'm working from home. If you're not working from home and you're in your office, you know, taking a 15 minute breaks whenever you're able to and walking around the building, walking around the parking lot, those are the smaller steps that you want to break your goal down into in order to um, fit that. And then also writing and visibility. Where have you written down your goals? where will you place your goals to make them visible to you? I know a lot of us like to have things up in our head. <laughs> we like to have it all just stored up here in our big, beautiful brains. Um, but sometimes having that goal written down so that you can see it, so that it's visible to you and your family, visible to you and your partner, um, that is something that will keep you motivated as well. Um, one of the tips that I had when um, I was living on my own was I had a um, dry erase marker that I wrote on my uh, mirror upstairs. And so you would write down whatever you needed. Or I know a lot of people have sticky notes. Um, you can make a um, bigger deal with it. If it's with your family and you have younger children of, um, you know, if you want to save to go to a particular place and making it a goal as a family, um, then you can, you know, have get Dollar Tree um, or any inexpensive poster board or markers and decorating it and saying, this is what we want to do as a family and this is what we are going to do. Um, so the fifth is reviewing and assessing. Um, how often will you review your progress? Are you attaining your goal? If not, what is causing you to fall behind? And then how will you need to modify your goal? So when you do write your goal down, how will you review your progress, basically? So am I going to check back with myself every month? Um, if it's a long-term goal, every two months? Um, if it's a shorter-term goal, every other day, am I going to say, you know, I move some boxes around the garage. 
um, now I have to start going through them, but you have to make sure that you carve out the time to be able to do that, um, to progress with your goal. Um, so the next is like, are you attaining your goal? If not, what's causing you to fall behind? Is it your work schedule? You're not able, you have a big project that's due that's coming up and it's causing you to work later than you usually do. So that's cutting into your, into your garage cleaning out time. Um, maybe you can save that for the weekend. Um, and then how would you need to modify your goal? If you know that you have a big project for your work and it's going to cut into your personal time um, for that project or for that goal, then maybe you want to modify your goal until, you know, you get on the tail end or the ending of that goal, I mean, of your project so that you'll have more time to be able to do the things that you need to do at home. Um, the sixth one is team or partners. So who can you ask to support you in this goal? How will you communicate and stay in touch with your partner? And when will you provide feedback and updates? Um, so who can you ask to help you support in this goal of cleaning out your garage? Um, maybe it's your family. If you are living by yourself, it could be a friend. If you are close with your neighbors, it could be a neighbor. Um, if your garage is up and they see it and it's like, hey, I see you still got a couple boxes left. <laughs> um, if you are friendly with your neighbor like that, then that could be a way of having somebody that supports you in that goal as well. Um, and then also celebration is how will you celebrate your successes? So it's possible that you wanted to have a couple of socially distant friends that come over um, or you just wanted to be able to put up something or put your car back in the garage because you had so much stuff in your garage or that might be a way to celebrate your successes. Um, it just depends on what you're comfortable with, what you have, um, and or who you have to come over, um, or how you want to celebrate your success. So here are some different things that will help you um, staying on track um, for your goals is reminding yourself of your goals. Dream big. Um, no goal is too small. Um, every step that you want to take that is bettering your life, it's not small, it's big. So dream big for it. Um, it's your life. You can achieve anything that you put your aim toward. So aim higher than you think that you can achieve. You will usually surprise yourself. Um, so number one would be writing your goals down and posting them where you can see them. Two is changing your goals. If they're not working for you, you have realized that this does not fit my lifestyle right now. Um, you have realized that this is something that I don't want to do anymore. That's okay. We can change our minds. We can change our, we can shift where we want to go in our lives. Um, it is completely up to you. You are empowered to do what you want with your life. Um, and so also be sure to reward yourself when you accomplish your goals. Make sure that you celebrate yourself for completing something that is bettering yourself. Um, and, you know, no celebration is too small, even if it is, you know, just enjoying some television that you always wanted to watch or finishing a show that you want to watch or ordering out and getting your favorite food. No <laughs> celebration is too small for the accomplishments that you have for your goals. Um, here's some way to, or here's some um, things that you want to think about with obstacles and roadblocks, there are two types of barriers that you will come across or you could come across when you are trying to complete your goals is internal barriers and external barriers. So your internal barriers are roadblocks that you create for yourself, right? <laughs> um, so for example, that's bad habits, poor time management, lack of self-confidence, negative and negative self-thinking. So that is you thinking, oh, I can't even, I, I won't even be able to complete this goal by the end of whatever, um, because I just, I can't, you know, I just, I can't. Can't, you can, <laughs> you can, it's okay. Um, so poor time management could be you just procrastinating. Um, we all do it and it's okay. Um, but being mindful that that poor time management is a roadblock that you are creating from yourself. 
Um, and some of those external barriers could be roadblocks that come from the outside source. So that could be what other people who you think, um, other people thinking that you cannot succeed in it becoming sick or having transportation issues for that particular goal that you had. So basically the haters are gonna hate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that is an external barrier for a lot of people is the perception of what people are thinking of them. Um, and so if you know that your goal is going to better yourself, then it does not matter what other people think um, because you know yourself more than anybody would ever know. So here are some um, you know, detours, forks, and dead ends, there are something that's always gonna happen. So failure to meet a goal can be a detour, a fork on the road to success, or a dead end. Um, it could be any of those things. Um, so it could just be, well, I'm gonna have to take this route now because the, partic the way that I thought that this was gonna go didn't go the way that it was planned, so I had to take a detour. A fork in the road to your success could be I could either go one way or the other. You just have to pick the, the plan that you think um, will work best for you. Or it could be a complete dead end where you stop in your tracks. You probably got to turn around, have to put in reverse, <laughs> back on up out of there and try again. Um, using failure as a valuable, a valuable learning experience. Do not view it as a dead end. Learn from your mistakes, regroup and move on. You got to flip it in reverse, you know, turn around, go back, and then try again and it's gonna be okay. So here are some good habits to help you reach your goals. Um, it would be getting up at the same time every morning, um, establishing a regular schedule, using calendars and to-do lists to keep track, and then monitoring your progress and celebrating your accomplishments. So um, getting up at the same time kind of establishes that regular schedule, that regular routine that will get you in the habit of doing um, what you need to do um, if that is exercising or walking or whatever the case may be doing that at the same time every morning or evening will help you stay on that schedule using a calendar and a to-do list for you to keep track can be writing writing it all down getting it all out of your brain where it's jumbled up <laughs> writing it on paper and having it so that you can see um, your next steps, those baby steps that you broke your bigger goal into. Um, so this is something that you can do. This is um, like the format of the goal setting. So I, whatever your name is, you are the who, that's the who, will your particular goal by the ending date. Um, and so that hits the SMART goal um, specific, measurable, um, achievable, results, focus, and time. So once again, I, me, <laughs> will, whatever that goal is by the end of, and it can either be a short-term goal or a long-term goal. So by December 2021, or it could be by February 2021 just depends or by a specific date that you have in mind for, it might be a wedding, it might be an anniversary, it might be um, Thanksgiving or the 4th of July, whatever by that date. And then here's another one of we, so this is where you're including your partner. Um, it could be you and your friends, it could be you and your entire family will goal by the date. Um, so once again, we, me and mine, <laughs> will this by the particular date. Um, and so this is just another format for it. Um, what do you want to achieve this week? It's down here on the left. Uh, what do you want to achieve this week? This is more short-term goal explaining exactly what you want to accomplish. Um, how will you be able to measure progress during and or after? Is this attainable this week? Is this realistic? And do you want, to, um, when do you want to accomplish this? So we can take my uh, garage cleaning out 
um, goal that I have. <laughs> and so what do you want to achieve this week? I want to clean out, clear out my garage. Exactly, explain exactly what you want to accomplish. I want to move the boxes out. I want to declutter. I want to sweep and make it nice and tidy. <laughs> Um, how you will you be able to measure progress during and or after? If you can section off your garage or the space that you want to clean or declutter um, into different, you know, you can make it into four and say, I would like to clean out this side of my garage by Monday, this side of my garage by Tuesday, this side of my garage by Wednesday, this by Thursday. Um, go through everything on Friday, sweep it out on Saturday, and by Sunday, I'm sitting in my garage with nothing but a chair in the middle, just enjoying the space. Um, Sometimes, well, then we can move on to the next. Is this attainable this week? I don't know. Um, well, I do have a project this week. I have a family commitment this week. We have Zoom calls this week for, you know, me and my family. Um, Maybe this is not a taking role this week because I have a lot of after hour commitments already. So then maybe this can be attainable in three weeks. So I will give myself three weeks to move out and clear out things whenever I have the extra time to be able to do this. So is this realistic? Yes, this is very realistic. If I make um, it into three weeks instead of the two weeks. And then uh, when do you want to accomplish this? I would like to accomplish this by the end of January or by the beginning of February, um, whatever day that may, might be, um, and having that specific date. So I, Jamil Hawkins, would like to clean out my garage <laughs> um, by February 2021. That is your SMART goal. Um, and the way that I broke it down into smaller steps is I would like to clean out section one over here by a particular day. I want to clean out this particular section by the other day. The section that's down here, I want to clean out by another day. Section down here by another day. Um, and I will sweep on this day. And so that's how you can break it down into more bite-sized goals. But the overall goal is still cleaning out my garage. So next, it is your turn. So this is something that you need to think about, that you need to write down if you need to re listen to uh, or go back and rewind and look at um, some of the steps again then that is fine as well. Just make sure that you take the time and you write down your goals for you and your family and you can commit to being fit. Fit does not have to be just your body. It is your mind as well. It is your whole being. <laughs> it is just you. So um, committing to being fit 2021. And so I just want to thank you again. Um, I have my email address down here. Jamil, J-A-M-I-L-L-E, period, Hawkins, H-A-W-K-I-N-S, at U-G-A dot E-D-U. Um, and we have a, a short uh, evaluation at the end of this that you can find, that you can click on, and please fill that out. It's two minutes or less, um, just giving me some feedback of what I could do better for next time so that we can all commit to being fit uh, for 2021. So once again, my name is Jamal Hawkins. I am the University of Georgia Extension Family and Consumer Sciences agent for DeKalb County, and I will see you all very soon. Have a great day.